Welcome to The Devil's Advocates, where we talk about the year in movies. Man, 2018 is already more than halfway over. We saw a ton of movies this year, and we figured now is as good a time as any to kind of take stock of what we saw so far and give you guys a little bit of a best of the year so far list. So if you missed any of these gems, catch up on them on DVD, Netflix, or if they're still in the theater, some of them. And if you did see them, chime in below if you agree with us that these are the best. It's always fun to make lists, so let's get started. Coming in at number 10, we have Hereditary. Ari Azur's brutal debut is unlike anything else I've ever experienced in the theater. Is it horror? Is it family melodrama? I'm not sure. But the searing performances, Tony Collette in particular, really stuck with me. After I saw it, I wasn't even sure if I liked it, but I knew they had this strong, visceral, emotional reaction to me. I went to go see it a second time, and now I know that it is one of the best of the year so far, hands down. Number nine is a little bit of a cheat of an answer, but it's 2001 A Space Odyssey's new 4K restoration. Yes, this movie's 50 years old, but the restoration that they've done this year, Christopher Nolan supervised the whole thing and they put it out in 70 millimeter, is just absolutely gorgeous, stunning, and it's like seeing the movie in an entirely new light. And that's why I think it's only fair that we include it on our list of best experiences at the theater in 2018. Just a masterful film from Kubrick. It lives up to this day, and like I said, the new transfer is something to marvel at. So I would consider that a new 2018 movie. Coming in at number 8 is another indelible experience, Juana Man. I spun that shit last week, still f***ing hilarious, I just like found the DVD, it was under my bed, I don't know how it got under there, but as soon as I put it in, the shit clicked. There's something about when guys dress up as women and it's all the funny shit about boobies that like really gets to me. Number 7 best movie of the year 2018, Evan's dad's video that he sent over to us from Prague. He went there on vacation, and maybe it was a work trip, I don't remember, but he sent us a beautiful video of the sunset, and it's like him smiling, it's cool. Unfortunately, he shot the thing vertically, not horizontally, which is why it's this low on our list and not like number 1 or number 2, but in general, excellent experience. Evan's dad's Prague video, loved it. Coming at number 6 is one of the most seen movies of all time. This is the you wouldn't steal a car, so why would you pirate a movie public service announcement. Watching this movie in 2018, I noticed something very special. It's actually about Trump's America. From frame one, it tells an amazing story about business incompetence, funny dress pants, Colin Powell's face mold that was removed when he was in college, a whole host of political and social economic issues that we rarely see in popular cinema like this. It's one of the hardest hitting depictions of true crime since The Wire, and that is no small compliment. Number five is Anthony Fantano's best albums of the year so far list for 2018. Fantano, excellent YouTuber, he's a melon head. And the way he blends his sophisticated, unbiased appraisal of the merits of this music with his personal opinion without ever duping you into thinking one or the other are the same. It's really interesting, really compelling, one of the best YouTubers. And just that entire video sums it all up. He talks about stuff that is objectively good that came out this far music wise and stuff that he just personally is digging. Some of the stuff I agree with him, some of the stuff I don't agree with him. That's like kind of what's beautiful about it. He turned me on to some music that I that I didn't hear before and some of the stuff I had already heard and I just wanted to hear validation. Like that Pusha T album, Daytona, love that he loved that because you know, I felt like I was closer to him because we both vibed with it. At number four, we have a slightly controversial pick, A Wrinkle in Time. I know there's a lot of hate on Twitter and backlash that, that this movie was overhyped or somehow didn't live up to the novel, but for me, it was a very magical experience. I wanted to check out one of those new recliner theaters, so I showed up a couple hours, three, four early, just to make sure I could find my seat. It was pretty hard finding the right auditorium because there's so many of them, and then there's so many fewer seats in it, it was very confusing, but by the time that the lights came up and John Cena came out and was chugging beer through his ass, I knew that I had in fact found A Wrinkle in Time. Bonus points to Eva DuVernay for not just crafting an amazing magical experience with Ike Barinholtz and Leslie Mann in it, but also finding a way to do a cameo digitally of young Jason Biggs. Number three is a straight tie between two movies I loved equally, both star in The Rock. Number one was Skyscraper. Man, that movie was awesome. The Rock is fighting like a giant gorilla, and there's a giant alligator, and there's a giant bat, and these animals that are super sized are like the size of a skyscraper. So it was a really clever use of the title. Awesome, enthralling. And equally met with fun action is his other movie that came out called Rampage. This time The Rock has only one leg and it's kind of like a diehard ripoff and he's trying to save his family and he's just going on a rampage through that giant building. Jumping, you know, to the building. Really clever use of the title there too. Just like a rampage of a time up that big building. That one's still in theaters right now. You should check it out. At number two, we have A Quiet Place in the library. I found this great room. It's in the basement of the downtown library. It's like, I think B4 is the name of the room. It's kind of scratched off, so I, I have to guess, but I know where it is by sight now. I mean, I can just kind of make my way down there. 
it's a really nice place to sit, get some studying done, maybe watch a movie on your iPad. Just all around, one of the best entertainment experiences whenever I go there. It's not a movie, but it is pretty cinematic. And the number one best film of the year so far is Melania's, Melania's jacket. jacket. You could say it's not a movie, but she really didn't care, so why should you? Anyway, thanks you guys so much for watching. Those were our favorite 10 films of the year so far. I guess 11 because the Rampage Skyscraper one. Right. We're looking forward to some more good movies coming out at the end of the year. We have stuff like First Man, stuff like Early Man. You know, they could easily be thrown these movies in the list. So definitely stay tuned at the end of the year to see what our actual final top 10 is. I'm sure at least one or two of these will make that list at the end of the year, right? Because like, you know, stuff like Melania's Jacket, very memorable. Absolutely. If you guys want to see us do the worst of the year so far list, give us a comment. Give us a like. You know, we'd, we'd be happy to share our opinion. That's what we're good for. Mm -hmm.